Let's go! So it's championship week, and we're going to break down the very little things that LSU needs to do to play championship football. Now, once again, these are the very little things. So who can forget this play right here by Kayshawn Butte scoring this touchdown? He does the sprinter's stance and pulls a Deshaun Jackson and actually lets the football go a full yard before he gets into the end zone, okay? And look, Kayshawn knows what he did was wrong, but really the little thing, championship play, was John Trey Kirkland, okay? The elder statesman, all right? That was actually Ty Davis Price, and this football just sat here live. And look at this. Heads up football. So I understand it's easy to go to Kayshawn Butte and just laugh at him for doing that. But Kayshawn is a high IQ football player. Like he made so many ridiculous plays as a freshman. He had the block to spring John Emery for the touchdown against Alabama that Emory had. He also, you know, just did so many little things. Downing the punt at the one-yard line against Florida was also another little thing play that he made. So, Kayshawn, he's going to be able to fix it. And I want to show you this, this ridiculous run by Justin Vincent right here at the highest stage you possibly can get the national championship game. I want you to let me know if you think Justin Vincent let this ball off a little too early. It's debatable, right? Is that loose? Once again, we don't have the end zone camera. And uh, lucky enough, it wasn't called. And as you see here, none of the Oklahoma players even picked the ball up. None of the LSU players went to go pick the ball up. It was a touchdown, right? So, once again... Who cares? It counted. We won the game. But still, it goes to show you that a lot of people make this error. And that's why it's good to have guys like John Trey Kirkland on your team. And that's the thing. If you're a coach, you want to have a million John Trey Kirklands on your team because you want to make sure you do the little things right. Obviously, that quote, the little things, well, the two greatest college coaches of all time, <laughs> whether or not these quotes are accurate, Still, John Wooden has said, do the little things right. Bear Bryant, your local high school coach. But here's the thing. You have to provide specificity. What are the little things? And it's ironic because Ed Orgeron said the exact same thing before starting practice before this past season. So football is such a fast and violent sport. You can never really assume anything. So my first championship play takeaway on this one where we were fooled on this bootleg on fourth and goal. LSU had burned a timeout, and Jacoby Stevens loses contain right here. Good play call, but as many of you remember, this referee is also fooled, and Matt Corral doesn't see him, and boom! Okay? So the first championship takeaway is always jump on the ball if it's loose. Now, this is really good hustle by Jaqueline and Roy, and he's like, oh my goodness. And then he just stops, okay? This is really good stuff. And you guys know I love me some Jaquel and Roy. You got to dive on it, okay? 64 did a good job diving on this and securing the touchdown. Very much like John Trey Kirkland, just hustling. Because when that ball is loose, you don't know if it's a fumble. So, you know, once again, I don't even know if Jacoby Stevens saw the loose ball. It was such a bizarre play, okay? But if Matt Corral, once again, it's debatable whether he even has possession right here. We'll look at another replay in a second. First rule of thumb, especially if the ball is in the end zone, dive on it. So once Jacoby Stevens saw this ball, and I, once again, I'm not sure if he even saw it, he should be racing back because the referee is part of the field. But here's the thing, if you dive on it, more than likely, he's not going to get it clean, and it's going to bounce out of the back of the end zone, and it's still a touchback, okay? But every time the ball is on the ground, holding on to the ball way too long on third and six, still a seven to zero game, you got to hit your swing route right here, okay? But once again, just going through reads too slowly, our pass rush 
pass protection is not great. Kem Wire's getting dismantled here. We're just giving up way too much push. And he tries to step up. The ball is just ready to be stripped. They'll never put the football up like that. And the ball is loose. Okay, now once again, you kind of tie in number one. We want to dive on this football, okay? But where the play needs to be made right here is John Emery needs to tackle this guy or at the very least slow him down, okay? Now, Emery does a good job right here seeing that he's about to recover this. So he sees it and then just sticks his shoulder in there and doesn't bring him down. And at the same time, takes Liam Shanahan out of the potential tackle as well. This tackle has got to be made. It has got to be made. John Henry was not recruited to LSU to make tackles. But that right there was a potential four-point swing. And this is the big reason why it's so important to make that tackle is that when you force the opponent's offense to come out there and actually score and use some of their red zone plays, it, of course, adds the extra element that your defense can go out there and hold them to a field goal. Also, more importantly, T.J. Finley, who is a true freshman quarterback, just threw an interception, just had that fumble, well, he's got to go right back onto the field after this mistake. And a lot of coaches will tell you this, that one of the key points of, of fixing an offense is after the turnover, regrouping as an offense. And guess what? It's not just TJ Finley. It's, guess what? The offensive line coach will get to talk to Cam Wire, and, and we get the fix pass protection. You lose that time of fixing a mistake because the offense has got to go right back on the field when the defense returns it for a touchdown. So, yes, a little face mask there, but still, this ball is loose, and immediately, we've got to jump on it. We have got to jump on it, okay? And once again, they didn't see where the ball was. Good job by Chase and Hines hustling here. We just can't have this. You've got to bring him down. Okay, this was a critical mistake. A potential four-point swing. What we're going to do on this film study is show you an example of when LSU actually does it right. So earlier in the game, TJ Finley did a good hustle play to force uh, the interception he gave up to not actually be uh, a touchdown. And here's another example here. Joe Burrow gets stripped from behind, interception, and right when he gave up this interception... He makes this tackle right here. And look at that form tackle from Joey B. I mean, just really stuck Terrell Lewis. If he doesn't make that play, does Jamar or Clyde catch Terrell Lewis in a foot race down the sideline? Probably not with all these blockers, okay? Imagine how different the game is if Joe Burrow doesn't make this tackle. So it is so important when you commit a turnover, just by any stretch of the imagination, make that tackle. And LSU was actually able to force a three and out. Then on the following drive, LSU drove down the field. You get another angle here. Look at this stick. Give it to him, Joey. Boom. <laughs> the heart of a champion there, man. All right, so here we go. It's fourth and three. Ole Miss is in plus territory, so they decide to go for it in this no-man land right here. So it's actually the good decision right here by Ole Miss to go for it. Okay, we bring a blitzer, and we actually don't get the best pass rush in the world here, but Matt Corral decides to throw up a 50-50 ball here. I think we're getting away with a little bit of interference. Who cares? We get the interception Todd Harris gets it, and this was just good defense right here by Todd Harris to make this play. Good job right here by Jay Ward to avoid the block in the back, okay? He was tempted to do it, but he didn't, so a really heads-up play right there, 
even though Ole Miss is begging for it. Okay, so we get away with the pass interference call, but what happened, right? We did all the right things there. We got away with the pass interference, and of course, Jay Ward did a good job after a pick six earlier in this game, but the mistake happened right here. So, look, the interception happened. Micah Baskerville is looking up at the scoreboard here. Matt Corral is running. He actually gives himself up here. And Micah Baskerville, boom, blindsides him. Okay? Cleans him out on a kickoff return. A kickoff return. An interception return right here. So, full disclosure... Some defensive coordinators tell their linebackers or just their defensive players, when you get a shot on the quarterback, take them. We want to rattle their best player and force them into more turnovers. And that very well could be the case because Matt Corral, as many of you know, went on to actually commit more turnovers in this game. Um, So whether or not you agree that that's dirty or not, some defensive coordinators actually do this, okay? They say... Anytime you can get a clean shot on the quarterback, do it. But this was not a clean shot. This is obviously an illegal blindside block. And he does destroy him. Steps over him. Allen Iverson versus Teron Liu. It's going to get flagged every time. Okay? So I understand what some of you are probably thinking. Okay, well, we didn't return it that far anyway. Well, let's just say that this was Eli Ricks instead of Todd Harris. And let's just say Eli Ricks took it to the house. Imagine if a pick six was negated because of that, okay? So while you do get the hit on the quarterback, and it probably did rattle Matt Corral, those things do begin to pile up, and the LSU pass rush was destroying Matt Corral, even on completions in this game. Uh, The stare down as well. Uh, you know, you just can't do that. But as we've done, LSU also did a good job of that as well. Uh, On this long reception here from Terrace Marshall, um, Eric Gilbert had an opportunity to commit a a vicious blindside block against Texas A&M. He was smart to let it go. Also, Austin Deculus against Missouri on a big Miles Brennan completion early in that game could have blindside blocked a defensive end that was trying to chase him. He decided to hold himself up and just shield him. Boom! So, of course, we're going to give you a bonus play here at the end. person that actually makes this play is, once again, Elias Ricks, who, by the way, we have listed as our number one player on the team. And it was met with a lot of controversy. You can watch uh, that video link down below. But it lends us to this play. So, it's at the end of the half, and you are up by 21 points, okay? So, in other words, a field goal does not hurt you in this situation because it is still going to be an 18-point game if you give up a field goal. So, the last thing you want to do is give up a touchdown as a defensive back over the top of your head. So, that's why it is so key in this situation to make sure that you don't get beat deep. So, Elias Ricks is feeling himself. He had the pick six earlier in the game. We get the play action fake. And look at this. Todd Harris bites on it, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And and this goes back to our safety film study. LSU safeties were so poorly coached last year when it comes to scheme. Why in this situation is our safety playing right here instead of supporting deep routes in this situation? The last thing we want to do is give up a touchdown. So, We did a film study discussing this specific thing, and we showed you a bunch of different examples of LSU doing this very thing right here. We need help over the top. But here's the thing. Elias Ricks does get beat deep, and Colin Hill does throw the ball a little late, and Elias Ricks panicked but did the smart thing. Pass interference, right? It's a horrible thing, right? No. Yes, of course, you would rather him bat the football down for an incompletion or intercept it. And yes, he did panic a little bit. He could turn around and have made a play on this ball, but he knew he was beat. And he knew 
that if he gave up a touchdown here, it becomes a two-possession game instead of it remaining a three-possession game. Pass interference is actually the second smartest thing he could have done there, okay? Obviously, the best thing to do is just turn around and bat the football down and not panic. And obviously, you know, earlier in the game, this is just bad technique. But it's at the end of the half, and since you're up by three possessions, this is only a 15-yard penalty instead of a potential touchdown. Once again, Elias Ricks doesn't know when he's beat here that this ball is going to be underthrown. Good job by Andre Anthony, though, to get some pressure. Good spin move right there to the inside. It did force Colin Hill to reset and throw off his back leg a little bit, which causes ball to sail. So good job right there by Andre Anthony. But see, Eli Ricks in this situation doesn't know that the ball was underthrown. Not a bad pass interference penalty. So that was such a smart play by Eli because, yes, South Carolina got a first down, but it was only 15 yards, and they actually didn't end up scoring before the half at all. So that was a seven-point swing right there by Elias Ricks uh, to make that play. And now here's an example of not doing this correctly. So it's third and 19, and LSU is actually up by six. Uh, And you see here their defensive backs are actually playing back. So there is no excuse to get beat deep here on third and 19. But Max Johnson is able to buy some time. And he would have actually been hit really hard in an actual game. But he was able to get this football off. And John Trey Kirkland actually gets behind true freshman safety here. Derek Davis Jr. Not the end of the world. Derek Davis Jr., turns around and tries to Willie Mays this ball and make the most incredible interception you would ever see. And on third and 19, we give up a touchdown. You can't get too mad at DDJ there. Once again, he's a true freshman. He's still learning the position. Um, But still, you know, Max was able to buy some time here. And there was actually, you know, a few mistakes made on this play. Once again, getting beat deep is never a great thing. And when you're in this position right here, okay, not all interceptions are created equal, all right? So you as a defensive back have to understand that on third and 19, a batted ball is almost as good as getting an interception inside the 10-yard line anyway, okay? And why is that the case? Well, they're getting ready to punt the football if they don't get this, okay? So essentially, if you intercept this pass, even if you even if you were able to make this pick right here, it would essentially be an arm punt, per se. So as a defensive back, the first thing, don't get beat deep. The second thing is just bat the ball down. But he went for the interception, misjudged the fly of the ball. Once again, he is only a true freshman. This was his first ever real game in front of fans you can't really get too mad at him but you know that's why you hear Ed Orgeron say that uh, the true freshmen aren't quite ready to play and safety is such a difficult position but in this situation you just want to bat the ball down okay you don't want to even try to intercept this or you could do what Elias Ricks did and pull him down okay the white team in this situation was up by 10 okay If you're up by 10, and once again, this was a spring game, so you're not really considering score per se. Um, Here's right, Darius Jones. You just want to pull them down there. Give give the 15 yards. Give them the automatic first down. Who cares? Don't give up the touchdown. So, you know, that's why those little things, understanding time and place, understanding where you are on the field, understanding what interceptions actually have value, Hope you enjoyed this today. Obviously, comment down below on that Justin Vincent play from earlier. Do you think that play was a fumble? (laughs) I think about it a lot. Like, uh, there wasn't really a great replay of it, per se. And honestly, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure if I ever saw the referee signal touchdown. I don't know. It's it was so strange. But anyway, uh, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of today's video. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom. 
Oh, we're doing Samad tonight. Let's go. Oh, 